Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So today I want to take a look at a paper that is often cited in the field of software engineering and is a staple of intro courses on the topic. It asks the question, why is software reuse so hard? And it kind of gives away the answer in the title. The reason it says is architectural mismatch. So let's look at what the authors mean by that. The goal of being able to construct large complex software systems from existing parts or components has been a holy grail of software engineering since its very inception. And that was certainly true back in 94 when this paper was written, but it remains true today as well. Even when the components you want are available, it's not always easy to make a larger system out of them because, as the authors put it, the chosen parts may not fit well together. And that's what they mean by architectural mismatch. And they try to explain in more detail what makes up that architectural mismatch. The paper draws from their experience in building the ESOP system. And what exactly ESOP did is not super relevant, but it basically needed four standard pieces, an object-oriented database, a GUI toolkit, an event-based integration mechanism, and an RPC mechanism. So these all sound like fairly basic, straightforward things that you would think have well-understood, robust libraries or components. And in fact, they did, and they had a number of choices, and they picked four particular toolkits or components that were present in the day. But at the end of the day, their results were not particularly encouraging. They spent two years and nearly five person years on building the first cut of their system, and it was large and ungainly, and it was slow, and it was difficult to maintain, and needed lots of detailed understanding of the low-level details of the implementation in order to work with it. Now, if you've been writing software for a while, this will seem like a very familiar story. The authors tried to reflect and understand why this had happened. The creators of these components were competent software engineers. The authors, in this case, were using these pieces within their intended scopes. So there must be a deeper systemic cause. And what they came up with was that the root cause was what they call architectural mismatch, which stems from conflicting core assumptions among these components. Let's look at a few concrete examples. Some of these conflicting assumptions were about how these components would get used. For example, their message server necessarily included the X library, assuming that all users would have a GUI, which means that even tools that did not have a GUI, such as command line utilities, had to link in the X library, which is a huge piece of code. Another very common conflicting assumption was related to the control model. Three of the components they used had an event loop to deal with communication amongst components. But they were all subtly different, and this made them incompatible with each other in strange ways. The authors had to use lots of workarounds and reverse engineering in order to get all these components to work nicely together. And they have many such examples. Another conflicting assumption was with respect to the data model. Their GUI toolkit assumed a hierarchical data model, but this meant that users could not change child objects without the parent object getting involved. Their object database assumed it was the center of the universe, and this made concurrency among the tools that used it very problematic. And if you read the paper, you'll find many such examples of places where an assumption made by one component completely conflicted with assumptions made by another one. So what is the way forward? How can we change this situation? The authors offer four suggestions. The first one, and the most important one by far, is to make all these assumptions explicit. 
they found that all these architectural assumptions were never properly documented. This is not the complete solution because simply documenting these mismatches will not make them disappear, but it will at least let users and designers get some heads up about the problems they might face. Another suggestion is to use orthogonal subcomponents. So even within a large component, ideally users will be able to switch out parts of it. Their third suggestion is to provide better bridging techniques, which is to say that you will eventually have mismatches occur, but how can you provide mechanisms to better deal with them? And their last suggestion is to have better sources of design guidance. What they're really asking for is to have a better understanding and documentation of software architectural principles and how you can use components and compose larger systems out of those components. So that was a paper that looks at the age-old question of why software reuse is so hard. It talks about architectural mismatch as the key root cause of that difficulty and offers a few suggestions on how to move past that. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.